just like Jesus. that our God is worthy to be praised. You are so worthy, Jesus. Thank you for your presence that is in this place tonight. God, come and have your way.
anybody in the room that's found him to be worthy, that's lived up to his promises. Come on, church, let me hear you roar like you serve a God who's a God of his word. We worship you, Jesus. You're a God of your word. Your promises are yes and amen, and you do not fail. Right before service, you know, a dear sister came up to me, and she said she'd been believing God for a house for a number of years. And if you're trying to buy a house in this Columbus market, you know how challenging that can be. But she said she'd got negative report after negative report. And today she finally said, God, I'm done. You know, God can do a lot with your I'm done. Here's what I mean. When you say, God, this is bigger than me. This is a God-sized situation. I'm going to step out of your way so you can handle it, so you can get all the glory. And when you come through, I can testify how big and bad and mighty you are. And after years of waiting, she said, God, I'm done. This is you or not at all. God stepped in and said, all right, I got you, honey. And they called her today and said, the house is yours. Now, you might be in this room and you might be saying, well, what does that have to do with me? Well, number one, we can celebrate for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. But the same God that did it for them, I just came up here to tell you he'll do it for you. So whatever your need is, great or small, we serve a God that is able, that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or even think. He's that kind of a God. If you believe it, shout amen one time. Ah, yeah. What well, is good to be with you in a faith-filled house called World Harvest Church tonight? Family, so good to see you. Hey, if you're a guest of ours, we are so glad that you're here. Family, let's let them know how glad we are that they're in the room with us tonight. There's a number on the screen. If you will take just a moment to text to that number VIP, we want to send you something very special for you being with us tonight. Well, look, is anybody ready for the more of God tonight? Got a little bit of room. We got an awesome man in the house tonight to deliver the word. Are you ready for the word? Get ready for the word. Let's welcome Pastor Cal as he comes to deliver it tonight. We love you, Pastor Cal. Pastor Chris. Praise God. Don't we have a magnificent Jesus? No, let's say it again. We have a magnificent Jesus. Dominion Camp Meeting 2019. How do we put words to it? The presence and the glory and the power and the salvation and the goodness of our Father God and of Jesus. And it's Wednesday and there's a residual. You walked in and said, wow, you haven't left us. There's more. Someone say there's more. I think we need to give a great big praise to our Father God one more time for what he's done. Thank you, Father God. pastoring over 30 years, I, I just want to say this too. Things like this just don't happen. It's the heart, the love, the passion that our pastor has for Father God, for Jesus, for all of us, for the move of God, for revival and change in our communities and world for Jesus. It doesn't happen unless you've got a sold out man of God and first family. And we are so blessed and so honored to have the very best in our Pastor Parsley in the first family. And we need to give a great big praise to our Father God right now because of his love and sacrifice and seeking God with all of his heart all these years. God shows up like this. Come on, let's do a big praise. Thank you. Bless our pastor. Bless the fam, first family. We are so honored. And I want to thank you for all the sacrifice we wanted, and we not because we have to, because we want to. The energy, the talent, the serving, the loving, the being part of Dominion Camp Meeting 2019, it doesn't happen without you. So let's turn to someone and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's all be seated. Praise God. I'm so thankful to, to see us all on Wednesday night here at World Harvest Church. 
I know some of you haven't slept since Sunday night when you got home at two in the morning. And Jesus is there and there's a stirring inside of us. And I want to say that there's more. Again, let's say there's more. We're going to look at a story tonight. And we're going to grab our heart. And it's been stirring in my heart all this, all this week. When, we, when we've entered this place that we've had the glory of God come down to, to minister to us and to change us. And we have reached out and we've, we've touched tens of thousands right here at World Harvest Church and the hundreds of thousands that have been online. And we get to this place that we kind of say, Father God, what's next? And there's so much ahead of us, but we want to share just a little bit tonight in the next few minutes. Is that okay? We want to grab what the Spirit of God is saying. We want to kind of get ourselves established and settled. I know we're in the saddle, but there's just so much that God's doing in our life. And it's kind of like not, well, God did great things and now it's summertime. No, God's done great things and there's greater things ahead of us because he loves us so much. So we want to look at a story tonight about Jesus and grab on what the Spirit of God is saying to us because of what we are going through. Because we're seeing the thousands and thousands that are saved right here at World Harvest Church in Elkhart. The tens of thousands have been saved in Pakistan and, and the hundreds of thousands that are being saved online and through all that World Harvest Church, Pastor Parsley, the whole ministry, what we do together. But it's just the beginning. There is more. And sometimes it's really easy to be like, you know, Peter said, this is fantastic. Let's build our, our three tabernacles and stay right here. But as he's talking like that, Father God says, hey, there's more. So let's find out what's happening. Let's go to Luke chapter 5 tonight. Let's make it personal for our lives and say, hey, this is my next step as we go forward. We're going to do this in Jesus. And, and it's exciting. We're praising God and so thrilled what he's doing. And it's just about blows us away when the Spirit of God keeps breathing inside of us. There's more, there's more, there's more. Luke chapter 5, we're going to go to verse 1. And let's start to read these verses right here. We'll stop. We'll let the Spirit of God kind of minister and touch us and build us up. Because we find our place saying, this is going to be the greatest summer that we've ever had on this earth. This will be the most dynamic summer in Jesus that anyone's ever had on this earth. And we are at the right place at the right time, doing the right things, perfectly assigned by the Spirit of God, all of us together right here at World Harvest. And it takes all of us together. Luke 5, let's go. On one occasion, Jesus was preaching to the crowds on the shore of Lake Galilee. There was a vast multitude of people pushing to get close to Jesus to hear the word of God. We could stop there for just 30 seconds and understand how important Jesus, the word of God, is for our life. And understand that I, my mother tongue is English, and I used to speak it better than I do now, but it's still English. But God's natural or mother tongue is Jesus. When he wants to show us what he has and what his desire is and what he longs for us, he shows us Jesus. And he speaks the language of Jesus to us. And we say, God, what do you want for my life? Well, we look at Jesus. That's his language. And so we see the hunger and desire for Jesus. That was right back in the day when Jesus is ministering. And it's in our day today. They came for the word of God. They came to hear Jesus. They came to hear the will and purpose of God. And when they saw Jesus, they saw God. And so they're there. They're excited. They're ready. He noticed two fishing boats at the water's edge with the fishermen nearby rinsing their nets. Jesus climbed into the boat belonging to Simon Peter and asked him, let me use your boat. Push it off a short distance away from the shore so I can speak to the crowds. DCM 2019, again, we allowed Jesus into our boat. It's sometimes real easy to stay on the shore just like Jesus is there talking and he's talking about the kingdom of God and how much God loves everyone and his purpose and plan for their life. But when you're standing on the shore, you know, you've only got those people in front of you and that's about all you can talk to. There was even Simon Peter and his business partners just a little ways away and they're cleaning and rinsing their nets and they're hearing God, you know, through Jesus talking about his goodness and his provision and all the things for their life and they're making it kind of comfortable and 
is a comfort zone for them, and they're, they're happy, and they're hearing it, and they're getting a little bit of hope. And, and as Jesus is talking, there's the, those around them that can hear, but the crowd is out there and desiring to hear, and it gets larger and larger and larger. Jesus sees two boats right there at the water's edge, and he says, as he jumps in, he says, come on, Peter, I'm going to use your boat. That, that boat for us is all of you and all of us together here at World Harvest Church. And Jesus says, come on, take me out. Push it out a ways, he said, because I, I, I want you to be blessed. Yeah, right, right there on the, on, the, on the shore and the water's edge. But there's such multitudes that need my Father's love. There's such multitudes that need Jesus. There's such multitudes that need forgiveness and salvation and restoration and that need healing and need to grow in me. And he said, come on, push, push, push me out. And, and we pushed and he pushed the boat out these last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And as he pushed the boat out, he was saying, you know what, I really like to hang out with you on, 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 the, on the shoreline right there. But he said, there's more, and they all need to hear about my Father's love and my salvation. That's what we've done. We've pushed out. There are a lot of churches that stay on the edge of the shore at water's edge and never allow God to push them out, never allow Jesus to get to the crowds because they are so interested in just themselves being blessed and for their little net of provision to be taken care of. But I want to thank you that this church, not just at Dominion Camp Meeting, but every day of every year, of every decade that we're alive here and push forward, we are always allowing Jesus to push us out and say, you can have my talents and my ability and my energy and my treasure, and I'll even give up the pew that I sit in so someone else can come, and I'll help in all the areas of ministry that I can, because as we get pushed out together, it's just not us that we're concerned about, because Jesus is not shoreline looking. He's looking at all the crowds that are out there, that all the multitudes that need to be set free and need to be saved. That's what we've done again at DCM 219. Turn back to someone and say, we did it. Thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Well, let's just go a little bit further right here. Jesus sat down and taught to people in verse 4 from the boat. From the boat, from the church. When he had finished, from World Harvest Church. When he had finished, he said to Peter, now row out to the deep water to cast your net and you'll... Have a great catch. Well, I think we know the story, but let me, let me read it a little bit, okay? He said, Master, Peter replied, we've just come back from fishing all night and didn't catch a thing. But if you insist, we'll go out again and let down our net because of your word. Jesus is insisting us to go out even deeper. When they pulled up their nets, they were shocked to see a huge catch of fish that was so much their nets would burst and so he waved his other business partners, it says, and they got two boats together. And the two boats, all of a sudden, the nets go down, the nets come up. And there's so much, their boat starts to sink. He calls his other boat over. They pull in there, and both boats start to sink. There is so much of a harvest that Jesus has for their life. They say that there was over a ton of fish that were caught that day. That's a lot of sardines, isn't it? Now let's, let's think about it just for a minute here and let's, let's pull it together. There's a comfort zone in life. I'm saved, my family's saved, um, my bills are paid, I'm 98% healed most days, feel good most days. Pray in tongues once in a while and I'm happy when I can talk about Jesus every so often. Most people live right there, but we don't at World Harvest Church. We're a family that loves Jesus loves our Father God and loves each other and loves the lost and hurting. Jesus is always asking us to pull out. Pull, get, get, get going. Let's go after the, what, which we do. Let's go after the lost and the hurting and the broken. Let's go after those that are the prodigals. Let's go after those that others have turned their back against and let's go bring them Jesus. And that's where Peter was. Now, now watch this right here. When Jesus is finished teaching that day, he looks at Peter and he says, Now, Peter, i got something for you. He says, There's a big harvest I have for you. There's so much that I have for you, but you're going to have to go out just a little deeper. He says, You're going to have to row. It's going to take some energy. 
there's no engine on it, no motorboat. And he says, as you go out, he said, I want you to stop because I've aligned you at the right place at the right time. Just like in baseball, infield in, put the shortstop over here, ground ball, third out, we're on our way to the, to the dugout and we've won. Father God has strategically set us up in the perfect place, every one of us, World Harvest Church. But what he's saying is, family, we're going to move out even further. He said, we've moved out a little bit and look, look all the people that heard about Jesus. That's fantastic. But he said, I want you to go a little bit deeper. I want you to pull way back because we're going to get more people saved. We're going to, get, we're going to touch our world like we've never touched it before. But he said, I want you to come out, come out deep, he said. Don't be satisfied where you are. Oh, be content that God's so good, but never be satisfied where we are. There's more that Jesus has for us to do and for us to walk with him. And so Peter says, man, we've, we've gone 12, 15 hours last night, and we, uh, we, we put our nets down, and, you know, we, we did everything right. We're business people, and we got no, no, no fish. I want to share this. It doesn't matter if we're batting zero or empty-handed tonight. I, I don't know if that was perpetual and perennial in Peter's life, that he wasn't a very good fisherman. I don't know, but he sure, he sure struck out that day. I don't know how successful he was or wasn't, but I know he was not successful that day. But he looked at Jesus and said, now Jesus, if you keep insisting, and Jesus had to be saying, do it, do it, do it. All of heaven's on your side. Come on, go for it, baby. And so he, he says, okay, I'm going to do it. And he lets down the net. It's such a boat-breaking harvest that it says it, they were awestruck, these fishermen. They could not believe it got to the point that Peter at right there said, Jesus, leave me. I'm a sinful man. And Jesus looked at him and said this, Peter, don't yield to your fears. I've got so much for you. What, what can we put that together tonight? As finishing and walking out of Dominion Camp meeting and walking now in the days ahead of us. Father God is saying, keep getting further, deeper in me. And that doesn't mean spiritually funny at all. It means I, I want you to not be comfortable. I want you to leave the shallow place of our walk with Jesus, a place that we're not in charge, a place that's not comfortable any longer, a place that we don't have our personal flotation devices like spiritual and emotional and physical water wings that we wear and we think that the water's only up to our knees but we're, we're like those little kids in a baby pool. He said, I want you to come deeper in me. He said, I want you to experience me like you've never experienced me before. Psalms 42 and verse seven says that our deepest need cries out for God's deepest kindness of love. There's such a deepness in us for a relationship with Jesus and to know him and to know the Father, that there is a calling for us to take our walk with God even further than we've ever done before this summer. Share your life with him. Every time we open the Bible up, say, Jesus, jump off the page because I just don't want to know the verse or the promise. I want to know who said it. I love when Jan texts me. I love when we talk on the phone. But I love it when we're together face to face. You see, it's so important that we see that, hey, I'm going to go deeper in my walk with Jesus. I'm going to love him. I'm going to let the distractions out of my life because I just know there's so much more. And so it's so vital. It, it, it's it's kind of like every time I read Psalms 42.7, I, I thought it was angels, but it's just the Bee Gees singing, how deep is your love? It just keeps going through my mind. Maybe it's angels singing it. You see, it's, it's there. It's there. And, and we realize, how do, I, how do we touch the world? How do we say, Jesus, do more? Well, it's really easy. We get real deep. The deepest need that we have is Jesus. It's not pride. It's not position. It's not power. It's not possessions. It's Jesus. And the deepest need of security and peace, of establishment, of having our life all together is in Jesus, nothing else. And so that's so important to us this summer that here we go. We're, gonna, we're gonna just going go to go out deeper in our walk with Jesus. We're not satisfied where we are. Let's, let's go, all of us together, after him. As we go out deeper in that, you know what? The harvest, those fish talk about the lost souls 
that Father God has called us to bring to him and the supernatural unlimited harvest that God has placed upon our pastor Parsley and how we've been joined together as fishermen and women to bring in that lost. I want to encourage us. Yes, we pray, but there's more than that. You know what? Every day we got somebody that, that we can encourage, we can love, somebody that can hear our testimony. We can give little 10-second shots here, 15-second shots here, 30-second shots here. It's so vital that we bring Jesus to where we are. And then not just invite them, but bring them to church. Let's do that. Let's have the goals this summer that I think I can bring one every Sunday with someone. I can witness this one person every day with love and, and really share Jesus. Forget that these and thousands, the world doesn't listen to that. So don't go that way deep. Just go deep in that love for them, okay? Just do it. We'll do it together. And we'll find ourselves seeing the harvest come in. And, and number three. When they're just concerned about themselves, all, everyone just, you know, I just want to hear Jesus on the shore for me and my family, and that's it. They just had a little net they were cleaning, and yeah, they were talking. That's cool. I can hear you can feel my little net. But, and I'm sure they knew that. Thank God he's filling my little net with a few little fish, and this little fish of mine's taking care of me, five loaves and two fishes. But when they got out into the deep, God changed the container for the harvest in their life. Instead of being a little net, it was now two boats. From going from two fish to 2,000. All of a sudden, Father God says, I want you blessed so much, but I want you to release control of your life to me. I want you to realize that I am in your boat, Jesus is saying. I've been there the whole time. I don't want you to be afraid of me like Peter was. And we've got to break all fear in our life. He, you know what he was afraid of, number one? That, that God was rejecting him. He was afraid that he was condemned and guilty. Isn't religion awful? He felt he wasn't good enough. And so he felt when he saw the goodness of God, it, it made him feel like he wasn't worthy of it. And Jesus is in his boat right there saying, man, I love you so much. I took your boat. I could have took somebody else's, but I love you. I took yours and we're together. We need to break that fear of our life that there's something missing in our life that, God, that we can't deal with so God can't bless us. That's so wrong. And the other fear Peter had was a fear of a harvest. And it was a fear that if I really let go, if I really let go and let Jesus be in charge of my life and be Lord, and I'm not in control anymore, and I don't have my water wings on, and I'm not in the shallow pool anymore, but I'm immersed in the presence and the life of Jesus, that I'm not in charge of anything, and that's for sure. We don't want to be in charge of anything because we don't do very good. But Jesus is perfect, and he says, I want to take you right out there, he said, where I'm in charge, and I will give you a harvest in your life which you've never seen before. And sometimes we've been praying. I've, you know, we've all prayed for such a big harvest. And Jesus said, the, the harvest is not just being comfortable on the shore. He said, I need you to come out with me and walk with me and love me and spend your time with me and put me first in your life like we've never done before. And he said, and I want you to see the lost and the hurting to be the biggest harvest we can bring in for the kingdom of God. And he says, when we start to do that, he says, I just changed your harvest. I changed no more limitations. I changed the mindset of what harvest is all about. And he says, I'll give you anything you want when you come out deep with me, he said. And when you come out so that I can get the gospel out to everyone in this world, he said, I'll give you anything you want because I'll make sure I give you a harvest that will fit two boats and more, not just some little fish net. You see, it's all about Jesus and what he wants. And we gave our life to Jesus. He says, I want to walk with you and fellowship with you. And I want you to know me. And I want you to share your ups and your downs. I want to share my life with you. He said, I want to get so close to you that we're going to, he says, follow Jesus and he'll make us fishers of men. It's not that we become fishers of men by ourselves because we don't know how to do that. We get close to Jesus every day. He just, it just rubs off on us. And that's the fun part. It becomes fun. So we start to see right there that he says, I've got such a harvest for you when all of a sudden we just tune into the harvest that Jesus has. And that was the thing that Peter was afraid of. But you know, the neat thing is at verse 11, it says this, it says, when they got to the shore, Peter didn't run to the shore and, and get his fish and stay there. It said he jumped out of the boat, left everything behind and followed Jesus. 
this summer we're going to leave everything behind, you know, and one step at a time. You know what I mean? Jesus, I've held on to this idea, or I've thought, held on to this mindset, or I've held on to this area of my life, or this fear, or this intimidation, or I held on to that someone else can talk to the lost and the hurting. Someone else can talk to my neighbors about Jesus. Someone else can bring them to church. And you see, someone else can, can, can use their gifts and abilities. No, 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 no. Let's go deep. Come on, let's go back. Let's, let's lose the shoreline. Let's lose the shoreline. Let's lose it. Let's lose it. Let's lose it. One of the, you know, I can remember years ago, we were on the ocean and we were, we were in this, we were in this sailboat and it was, he was a, he was an airline pilot and he was a, he was a good pilot, but he also, he knew how to, this uh, 30, it was a 34 footer and, and it was a sailboat and we were out in the Pacific ocean and, and we we're way out there. I couldn't even see anything. And he turned over to me and he said, now I want here. He said, you take this and you go for it. Well, it was, a, I thought we were all going to drown in about 13 seconds. I had no, no, I, cause I couldn't, I couldn't see anything. I, lo I lost all, where am I? Where are we going? And, and I realized that once you get away from the shore, you lose all your comfort and security of what we thought we knew and how to handle it. And father God is saying, I want you to lose all the view of the shoreline. He said, I want, I want you, I want you to just trust me. I want you to get deeper in me. I want to be there for you. It's important that we see that. We're entering into the greatest part of life that this world has ever seen that we've ever seen in Jesus. And the exciting thing is that we have a pastor that takes us off the shoreline. And if we start to see where we are right now, where Pastor Parsley's leading us and we're going together, we can't even see the shoreline anymore. If we're going out deeper and deeper in Jesus and the lost and seeing the power and the love of Jesus every day. And, and you know what? I want us to keep encouraged to keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Keep, keep going for it in every area of life. And there may be some areas that we need, to, we need to jump out of our boat and get into Jesus' boat tonight and for the rest of our life forever and ever. And that's exciting too because there's so much ahead of us. We're going to launch out and go deeper. Amen? Come on, let's stand together. Jesus, we love you. We love you so much. We praise you. You know, as we stand... <laughs> I can just sense even in our life tonight, there's some areas that we say, golly, I don't know. I, I should give that up to God. Oh yeah, it's easy. Or areas that we thought, you know what? I didn't know that, that Jesus loves me that much that I can release some things tonight. I never thought that the, the needs and the hurts and the fears and the cry of my heart, I thought things could fill it. Now, even, in the, even as Christians, I thought, well, I had to have this or do it this way or that way. And we realize that we still feel empty. We still feel hurt. But as we go to Jesus, the deepest cry and need of our life is met in him and in our Father God. Because there is a world broken and Jesus is saying, I don't want us to be broken any longer because a broken person is hard to minister to them full blast. So there's some things that we can release tonight. Other areas tonight we might say, man, I thought God was against me. He's not. I thought God was holding something back. He isn't. I thought that Father God was doing some things and I didn't know what they were. And I thought that God was doing things without me. I'm sorry, we're at the right place at the right time doing the right thing. And tonight, it just is a release that we have that's really, really simple. And we're going to pray a prayer. And I want you to join me tonight. I just want you to let the Spirit of God just touch us in such a special way this evening. Follow me. Let's pray this. Father God, tonight and for the rest of my life, I'm launching out into the deep. I'm not satisfied by just being comfortable. I'm not satisfied with being where I am today. I'm so thankful, but there's so much more. And Jesus, I give you every fear. I give you every limitation. I give you every mindset that has held me back because I'm launching out into the deep with you because you're in my boat. Thank you, Jesus, for your healing, for your love, for your hunger and desire for all of you in my life and a desire to have the lost and the hurting 
come to you, Jesus, and I'll do my part. We'll do it together. And thank you, Jesus, for your goodness in every part of my life because the goodness of my God leads to repentance and change and goodness. Now, as we stand, we might also be here tonight and saying, hey, Pastor Kelly, I never thought that way, that God's not against me, he's for me. And he's always been in my boat like he was with Peter, but Peter didn't recognize it at first. But we may be here tonight and saying, you know what, I wanna have a fresh start with Jesus. I wanna know that I've got a God who loves me and isn't against me and isn't judging me and he died on the cross for me to set me free in his son so I can walk with him every day and he's not against me, he's for me. Let's pray it together. Jesus, I give you my life, every part of it. Be my savior, be my king, be in charge of my life. I wanna live with you every day. I want your eternity, I want your presence, and I want your kingdom, and I receive it now. In Jesus' name, thank you, God, for being my Father. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's praise him that he's our dad and he's on our side. You know, there's, oh, I know there's a whole bunch of us tonight that said, tonight I just said yes to my walk with Jesus. And in just a minute, well, let's be seated right now. I'd like you to do something that you said tonight was my night with Jesus and we want to pray with you and love you and be there with you, encourage you and be in the boat together with Jesus. There's a little card in front of you right there. I'd love you to fill that out. and You can leave it before we leave tonight, right on your seat, right where you are and your name and address and right phone number and how we can get a hold of you and be a blessing. We're going to walk together because walking with Jesus, we're in a boat together. It's not by ourselves. It's not isolation. And that, that's important that we see that. You're such a blessing to each one of us and you're such a blessing to God that we want you to be everything that he has for your life and we're here for you. So you fill that out. There's right in front of you that card. And uh, we're, we're going to take those later and give you a call already tomorrow be there for you, pray with you, encourage you in every single area because we want you to be all that you can be and will be in Jesus right here at World Harvest. Now, how many are ready for a, 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 go, a, go, a go deep blessing, a go deep harvest? Uh, yeah, I, I, how about over here? Are we ready for it too? I, I know we are. We're going to minister to God tonight. But here it is. Now watch this. Because of everything that we do right here at World Harvest Church, and I thank God for World Harvest Church, as we've heard, we'll keep saying it, you won't find churches like this in too many parts of this side of heaven. We are so blessed, we'll never take it for granted. But here we've again just come out of Dominion Camp Meeting. And Father God says, now because of you let me take your boat, and because we got to minister to thousands and tens of thousands through this whole week, and we're all part of it together, Father God is saying, hey, I've changed your vessel and container of harvest. No more little fishnet blessing, but I want to fill your boat up that you have to call your friends and your neighbors to say, come on, there's some for you too. And it, again, it wasn't because of how good Peter was because he was failing at it. It was how good Jesus is for us. So let's get ready to minister on this Wednesday night in such a wonderful way to touch Jesus, to grow his kingdom. We want the boat to go out further in all that we do here at World Harvest Church with pastor, all of us together. Our smart giving is, is important. Of course, all of it's on the big screens right now that we can see, that we can text to give. There's offering envelopes that are right there and front of you to grab that envelope and use that you can do that and for everybody online there's that banner right there that you can click and i'm so thankful for all of our family that's online and what a place for them for you to be ministering with us and be part of all that we're doing and we're all receiving the blessing from our father god not just a little net 
But let's let Jesus break two boats tonight, a blessing for us. Amen. Can you take that? I can take it to Father God this evening. We thank you on this Wednesday night right after Dominion Camp Meeting. We just thank you for all that you've done and all you're doing. We thank you that we're launching out into the deep together. We thank you, Father God, that what we used to see as our blessing and harvest you have for each one of us just got bigger because we start to see like you, walk like you, talk like you, and love like you. And we thank you right now so supernatural that there is the net breaking, the boat sinking harvest that you have for all of us here tonight. And we thank you and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. And let's all say it together. Tell your neighbor it's harvest time. To our online congregation, God bless you. So glad that you've been with us tonight. Wonderful people, you glad you came out tonight? Yeah! So glad you were here with us. Hey, reminder, if you receive Christ as your Savior tonight, this little card right here, just leave it on the pew and we will collect it after service. Well, hey, it's been a good night, but we got something to look forward to this week.